Hi loves, welcome to my channel. Yes, her Esther J. Today's video, I am gonna be talking about my trip to Cuba, what I think you should know, and also my experience. So if you are interested, stay tuned. First things first, I got this question a lot. Yes, it's possible as an American citizen, you can still go to Cuba. It's just that we have a limited amount of reasons that we are permitted to go to Cuba. So if you don't have family members, um, you can definitely do in support of the Cuban people. That means the places that you stay, the restaurants that you eat at, and anything that you buy, you're patronizing with the Cuban people. So I stayed at a Casa Particulares um, that I found on Airbnb, and you're not allowed to stay at a hotel because they are run by the Cuban government. Um, also, just so you know, flying into Cuba is possible directly from the United States. I also got that question as well. So if you do book anything through Airbnb, although it works here, it's interesting because it does not work while you're over there. You will not have internet over there. Unless you're at your casa or your Airbnb, you'll have Wi-Fi there or some type of public place. But like I was saying, Airbnb, the app will not work when you get there. So you definitely want to screenshot everything, all your excursions, everything as it pertains to your, your stay, you're going to want to screenshot and have that available in your phone. Now, passports, I did hear that, you know, there were, you have to walk around with your passport or at least with a copy of your passport. I didn't quite find that to be true. The only time we had to use our passport was at each Airbnb that we stayed at. The hosts had to write down like our information. So that is the only time I had to use it. I never had to use the copy. I did keep it on me. So if you want to be on the safe side, you can go ahead and keep a copy in your purse, but it's not necessary. Sorry. That brings me to another suggestion. I do recommend keeping your itinerary in your notes just in case you get asked where have you been when you get back from um, your trip. Speaking of keeping track of your itinerary, we did get interrogated. And my cousin and I, when we first landed in Cuba, they asked us where we were staying, how long we were staying for, where did we work. They asked us a bunch of different questions and I was taken aback by that because out of all the places I've traveled, I never got interrogated like that. It was really interesting, especially since the couple behind us were also American English speakers. And the only difference is they were non-melanated beings. You could say whatever you wanna say, but call it an isolated incident, whatever you wanna say, but that kind of threw me off a little bit. I will say also that I didn't let that put a damper on my trip because I just got there and from all the excitement that I had, I didn't want to ruin my trip. So I still made the best of it. Moving right along, yes. we stayed at three different places. The first place we stayed in was in Havana. That was an Airbnb, but it was kind of given like boutique hotel vibes. It was very cute. I love the staff. They were amazing and so sweet. Everybody from our host, the bartender, the chef, everybody was so nice and so welcoming. So I believe we stayed there for about two nights and then after that we went to Trinidad, Cuba. So before I get into that, the first excursion that we did as soon as we landed, pretty much, yes. our flight was delayed by a couple of hours. So we should have been there a little earlier. We would have had time to relax for a little bit and then get ready. But we didn't have time to do all that because we jumped right into a photo shoot. Because for my birthday, I wanted to do this photo shoot. And the way that the trip was, only two days here, two days there, two days there, I wouldn't have time to do this photo shoot. And I love, love, love the lady who did our photo shoot. Her name is Claudia and she's shooting in Havana. I love her, so shout out to her. She did an amazing photo shoot and she's so professional, so nice. She gave, she basically gave us a little tour of Havana cause she, the different spots she took us to to do these photos, like she was giving us the history. She gave us a great place to eat. She was just awesome. Like I highly recommend her if you go to Cuba. Um, but like I was saying, I had to squeeze in where I could and the only time that would work would be the day that we got there. So, cause the next morning we were going to Vinales, which is 
a couple hours driving so it's an all-day trip so we would not have time to do the photo shoot so yes I had to do that so Vinales was awesome as well by the way I booked Claudia through Airbnb I also booked the Vinales through Airbnb so like I said get those screenshots and then the next morning we headed out to Trinidad like I said that's like four hours away that one we stayed at a hostel and it's not your typical hostel. When you think, when I think hostel, I think bunk beds, everybody sharing the same bathroom. But this was more like a hotel. It was more like an outdoor hotel. Uh, our room had two separate beds and we had our own bathroom situation. So that was awesome. Back to the stairs, I will say this. Be prepared, bring your walking shoes because you're gonna take stairs everywhere you go. Plan to walk. For the first part of our trip, it was just stairs everywhere. There were no elevators, okay? So that's that. When we got to Trinidad, Cuba, we did find an excursion a last minute, just walking around, talking to the locals. And I love, love Trinidad. It is like my favorite favorite place that we went to to be honest like it's such a slow warm type of vibe like the cobblestone streets it's just so beautiful I loved it I loved being in nature like it was a little town but like it wasn't too far like we got to go to a waterfall from there we got to ride horses now we rode them horses for a whole hour to get to our destination that's what i was gonna say like the excursion we got through talking to the locals be careful so you don't get got like us we got got so when we got there we spoke to the local he's like oh you want to go to the waterfall but the hostess at our house already told us it was too late and she scheduled her brother to take us the next morning but of course we ran into these people and we're like oh they seem nice maybe he's telling the truth they took our money okay and then when we he said we wouldn't have to pay nothing else this money would pay for the horse ride all the way through to the waterfall when we get to the gate to get to the waterfall the park ranger comes out and is like where's your money so we have to make the park pay the park ranger and the guy that was guiding us who was separate from the guys that booked this excursion for us he said he hadn't been paid either so we were already there after riding the horses for like a whole hour and so I was like we're already here we're just gonna pay this money and go inside thankfully take cash with you everywhere just so you know I don't think I used my card actually you cannot use your card actually so when we got to the waterfall it was beautiful now I will say this also we got got again because the waterfall that I asked about is not the waterfall that they took us to but I'm a waterfall girly and I love waterfalls i loved it that's why i said i would go back to trinidad again and stay a little bit longer we so we got to enjoy the waterfall and night is starting to fall we are walking through the woods in the dark then we get to our horses who do not have headlights and we're riding through the night about an hour maybe like 45 minutes to an hour in the dark and we're galloping through the night I will try to insert some footage so you can have a good laugh. And like looking back, it was so much fun. Like going through it, I just thought it was crazy. Like what were we thinking? And then wear leggings if you go horseback riding over there. They don't care if you're wearing shorts. We wore shorts to the waterfall because we're going to swimming. I had blisters on the inside of my thigh from the rubbing of my skin against the saddle. So definitely wear something long. I wasn't aware because I never rode horses really in my life until Cuba. But next time I know, wear long pants definitely. And do not wear flip flops. I believe my cousin wore some cutesy little sandals and they got, they were yellow. They got so dirty because we were riding through the mud and everything. So don't do it to yourself. Okay. Um, so yeah, we stayed one night in Trinidad and I really do wish we had stayed there longer. Before we went on the excursion, we had, while we were walking through the town, we walked into this restaurant that had something called limonada, the best thing you could ever have. It was so hot that day. And I will insert 
a little footage here because you have to see this place. Because not all limonadas are made equally. I had one afterwards because I was like, oh, I, I could use a limonada right now because it was so refreshing on a hot day. I asked for that somewhere else. Not the same. This restaurant, I don't even know if I got the name of the restaurant, but this restaurant, for sure. If you see this while you're walking in Trinidad, stop by, get a limonada, thank me later. I can't say about the food. I think I had like a sandwich and it was a tuna fish sandwich. So who goes to Cuba to eat a tuna fish sandwich? So that, that's my fault. I take full responsibility for that. The next day, breakfast or brunch, because it was like, yeah, you could call it breakfast. That made up for the food from the night before. So that night we, everything was pretty much walking distance, but like I mentioned before, it's cobblestone. I had on flat sandals. A, a lot of people wear tennis shoes, they wear boots. I had on flat sandals, they were pretty good. My cousin, she wasn't so prepared, okay? So like I said, all I'm gonna say is leave your wedges, whatever cute little sandals you got, cutesy little sandals, unless them things are sturdy, don't do it to yourself do not do it to yourself there's a lot of walking on cobblestone so we um you know you can ask the locals where should you go so we went to a local bar not too far from the hostel we were staying at and it was cool then we went to another one this was the cave club oh my god that was an experience i've never been to a club that's in a cave so that was fun for me the drinks were okay much better than the other place that we went to and the cool part about it is i think it was like dirt cheap it was like two dollars entry fee and you got a drink per person so i forgot to mention when we were in havana we stayed at we went to a restaurant or a bar called Le Sec or Le Se. It's a speakeasy actually, and it was the cutest vibe ever. The waitresses are dressed in newspaper boy outfits with the suspenders and the hat and everything. It is the cutest. The drinks were so good. They had live entertainment, but you walk through a bookshelf to get in. It was just amazing. I definitely recommend that one. Back to Trinidad, back to the Cave Club. It was very crowded. My cousin and I sat like on the side at a little cute little table we found on the side. I'm just glad we got to experience it because actually as people started to leave, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as crowded. You could breathe. So, you know, I actually recommend it. The next morning, literally, we went back to Havana and this leg of my trip was all about re relaxation. So we got a little bit of an upgrade. We actually got to stay in a condo this time. It had an elevator and by like, I think we were there like four days by then, three or four days. And to have an elevator was amazing because we brought a lot of luggage with us. So yeah, we got a colectivo to take us to Trinidad. And colectivo means collective. So that means more than one person in a taxi. The guy had to take just us because we had so much luggage. And basically my cousin was squished back there in between luggages. So to be fair, I had a bag of stuff that I was going to give away. So I bought toiletries, I bought different things to give away. So the moral of the story is don't pack heavy unless you're taking the taxi by yourself. But in this case, I had good reason to pack heavy because I had stuff in support of the Cuban people that I was giving away. So the next morning when we had our food, we went to Bistro Trinidad. The lobster was really, really good. Everything that we had was really, really good. Food was only 31 euros for my cousin and I. So the food is very cheap, just so you know. So when we got to our third Airbnb, that was back in Havana, but in Vedado, which is a little bit closer to the ocean. And it was a nice one because we were staying in a condo that had an elevator. So we finally didn't have to carry our luggage up the stairs to be fair all the other places they helped us yeah so having this elevator was great even the hostess that was with us she was kind enough to help us help us escort our stuff into the elevator and up to our place and that place was beautiful it was on one of the higher floors and you could just 
it was beautiful you got nice view up there it wasn't quite ocean view but you could see the ocean at a distance i just love that place it had its own bar so you could make your own drinks they had bottled water it was just nice overall it was a two bedroom apartment two baths so my cousin and i each got our own separate bathroom so it was cool and so our last day we went to Veradero Beach which is one of the top beaches in the world so it was very nice to actually experience that so I loved that experience and I'm a beach girly as well so when it comes to the food in my research I found that people said that you could only find pork and lobster or that was the majority of the options that they provided or the menu had stuff listed on there that wasn't available I found that to be absolutely false my cousin eats meat so she had beef and chicken and I am pescatarian so I had fish shrimp and of course lobster and the lobster was great and I don't know who doesn't love lobster anyways I would have probably ate it every day if I didn't want variety so I don't see there shouldn't be any issue like if you have dietary needs they there are options for everybody and the food was really really good I heard to bring hot sauce I brought tahin I forgot to get hot sauce but I brought tahin my tahin was not used in the end I ended up giving it to the hostess at the last spot that we were in all my food was very flavorful they have hot sauce if you need it they the people who I think said there were limited options and the food wasn't good i think those are people who stayed at resorts if you're at a resort try and go eat outside of the resort make sure you research them first or make sure they come highly recommended because you know everybody's taste buds are different just because somebody recommends something it might not be according to your taste buds so i understand that but the food overall was really good and then when we got to veradero we did go to the beach we hung out we had some drinks at the bar it was cool and then unfortunately we did go to a restaurant where we had an issue um where the lady she was one of the white cubans and she wasn't let's let's just say what it is she was being racist she sat us down did not come to take our order and then about five minutes later a white family comes in and she sits them down she takes their order i was done at that point but my cousin wanted to stay so I thugged it out and when she finally came over to take our order we gave her our order when I got my lobster it was raw insert here okay my lobster was raw and it was mushy I took like probably a bite or two and when I tell you the next couple of days my stomach was toe up it was toe up so <laughs> After the first bite, you know, I couldn't believe it. So I took like half a second bite. Then I, I took it back. I was like, this isn't cooked. And they gave me all the excuses that they were. Oh, um, the grill isn't working. Well, why didn't you tell me that at first? And we waited forever for our food. So basically we're sitting there starving and then you couldn't even cook my food right? Like, come on. And then y'all didn't say nothing. So the girl at the, ca at the counter, she was melanated. I explained to her everything that happened and she was like, Oh, well, she thought you didn't speak Spanish. That doesn't matter that I don't speak Spanish. And actually, I do understand Spanish much better than I speak it. But I do understand and I'm able to communicate everywhere I go. So I don't see what the issue is. So she had excuses and I'm like, nah. So I didn't um, end up eating my food. So they took it off the bill. And when we went back to the beach and I dropped off my cousin, I just looked across the street and I saw a restaurant. So I walked over there totally completely different vibe so much better the man there he was not melanated he was very nice he was so sweet so welcoming so inviting at first i wanted to just get my food and go to the beach he was so invited so inviting he changed my mind and i basically sat there and ate my food and it was so good it was like i'm so happy that you know i ended up going there you know what i mean and that changed my experience on Veradera. I didn't, I'm not going to completely cancel out Veradera because there are some good, nice people there. So I just know I'm not going to that uh, that restaurant. It's in the shape of a boat. I'll find the name of it and let y'all know. But um, yeah, we did have another experience in Havana, actually. The restaurant, I will put the name here as well. They just basically ignored us. <laughs> and then the manager came by and was like, 
they need help so that's when those girls came over and took our order and they were trying to tell us what to order when we're like no we want this and i guess she thought we didn't understand what we were looking at but no we know what we're looking at ma'am <laughs> we want this um so that was an interesting experience taxis and bc taxis are not hard to get I think I mentioned this briefly before, but your internet will not work. I know some people have a hard time with that. Sometimes it's good to go take a break without technology. What I did was I downloaded Google Translate. I downloaded Spanish specifically so that it would work while I'm there. Also, I downloaded maps.me. That will help you navigate without internet. Now, VPN, it's up to you. Another recommendation I'm gonna give you is, I don't know if water is scarce because of where we stayed at everywhere we stayed at they had water to offer us so i didn't really have that problem um i had clearly filtered water bottles so as you can see there's a filter in there this is not sponsored by the way but i highly recommend it bringing your own water bottle because that way whenever you want water you can get it on your own it helps even at the airport because i didn't have to pay six dollars for a little water bottle the one thing I will say about this water bottle though, mine is, they have the, they have cheaper ones, the, they have the ones that are made out of stainless steel, but I, I gotta see what I'm drinking. But because the straw is on the outside, if it's on its side a little bit, then it might drip a little, but not like a constant drip. It's really weird. So I did get in contact with the company and they sent me a replacement and the replacement top did the same thing. So I want to give you that warning. My cousin got something else and her top screws on so there was no leaking with hers. Um, but the reason I went with this one is because I did my research and I saw all the stuff that it filters. It even filters out PFAS. I love that about that. So that's why I went ahead and got this. And you only have to change this, I think, every two months if you use it like every day but this is a great great thing to have because i didn't have to ask for water anywhere bring lots of cash i believe in my research there were atms but it's hard to find and then the country has blackouts and you might be in the middle of getting your money out and then there's a blackout and then boom what next I will say this, we did not experience a blackout, <laughs> thank God. I wouldn't be shocked if it happened, but thankfully we did not experience a blackout. Okay, so we also brought toilet paper. So they say, you know, there's a shortage of toilet paper. So in my little purses, I would bring like toilet paper in a little baggie everywhere I went and I never used it. <laughs> oh, actually one more thing. So I heard that you can only bring crisp bills, like try to make sure your bills are not ripped or have any markings because they don't like to take those. I didn't run into any issues like that, but I did try to inspect my bills before going to Cuba. I, um, I believe I covered everything. If there's anything else that you need to know, let me know in the comment section below. Check out Instagram if you want to see any pictures. Don't forget to check out the original Cuba travel vlog. I will link that below as well. Don't forget to like this video so I can continue making more. And until next time, love you guys. Bye.